I am so jet lagged. It's really hard to push your body to adjust to the new time zone. I think I woke up around 4 a.m. and I just couldn't fall back asleep. It's now 6 a.m. and I can see the sun slowly rising in the east. I can really feel the city slowly getting up to start a brand new day. Today I'm going to Tokyo Disney Sea. There's a Disneyland and there's a Disney Sea and I heard the Disney Sea is for more like adults while the other one's for kids. So I'm gonna go there today and I got these Mickey Mouse ears in advance because I think it's a lot more expensive if you buy in person. But like I'm ready to go and I temporarily have these buns on because it's so hot outside. Um, when I'm actually at the park, I'll be taking them off so I have like curly ponytails. Hoping that it's not going to rain today because apparently according to the forecast, there should be thunderstorms. Yikes. This elevator is so humid, you can actually like feel it. It's scorching hot and humid in Tokyo. When I got on the elevator, I wanted to go back to my hotel room where the temperature is a lot cooler. In Canada, on escalator, slow walkers stand on the right side, leaving the left for fast walkers. However, in Japan, it's the complete opposite. Compared to Vancouver, Japan's public transit system is exceptionally well done and incredibly well connected. This bus offers free Wi-Fi and will take us directly to Disneyland and Disney Sea. The estimated travel time to the park is around 30 minutes. We can use our Suica cards for payment, so we made sure to have enough funds. Jason installed the Tokyo Disney Resort app, which oh displays God, the park's map minutes? and wait time for each ride. Unlike the Disney World app for Florida, you can't reserve spots for rides. By the way, I purchased my headband on AliExpress a while back for $5. I heard that at the park, they charge around $20 for a headband, so it might be a good idea to buy one in advance. During my trip, I realized that a lot of Japanese folks don't actually speak English at all. It made things quite tough, even at the hotel when we needed something and tried speaking in English. Thankfully, Jason can speak Japanese and having him along was a lifesaver throughout the trip. A lot of tourists in Japan were also grateful that Jason was there to translate for them. Something that surprised me was seeing so many foreigners around, especially working in convenience stores, restaurants, and hotels. Japan's pretty homogenous as a society and somewhat closed off, but with the population shrinking, they've hired up quite few foreign workers. Now that I'm seeing some palm trees, this reminds me of Florida when I went to Disney World. So you know Jason, right? Well, turns out he's pretty tall for Japan. It's been kind of funny seeing him trying to adjust to everything here during our trip. Like doorways and low ceilings are not his best friends at the moment. But hey, he's a champ, adapting like a pro and making it all work. I learned online that purchasing tickets at the venue wasn't an option, so we made sure to buy ours in advance from the official Tokyo Disney website using our credit cards. We got a barcode in the email and they scanned it the moment we entered, so everything was a quick and easy process. The tickets can fluctuate depending on the timing of your visit, but we paid around $80 per person. Additionally, there's an option for evening tickets after 5pm on weekdays at almost half the price. Wow, I'm surprised how some locals can actually manage to wear full long sleeves in this kind of temperature. I even spotted some people cosplaying as some anime characters and huge props to the staff dressed up as Disney characters in this heat.
So the first ride we picked had an insane line. It was so crowded that they had to create a whole new line to accommodate more people waiting. Here's the thing about Tokyo Disney, it's not as big as Disney World in Florida and they don't have as many rides. I wasn't too keen on waiting in that long line, but Jason insisted it was one of the popular rides and better to queue up now than face an even longer wait later. I was feeling really tired, especially with my flat feet, not exactly making things easier. But hey, we're halfway there and it felt too late to give up at that point. Once inside the cave, away from the scorching sun, it was a relief. The temperature was a bit cooler, plus some spots along the line had fans and air conditioning, which was a lifesaver. Waiting over two hours for a single ride was quite an experience. Honestly, after that, I wasn't keen on going through that ordeal for the next ride. So I said, let's stroll through Disney Sea, and whenever we spot a ride with no wait time, let's jump on it. We headed to Sultan Oasis and picked up two long nuns, an iced coffee, iced oolong tea, churro, and the Sultan Sunday. By the way, the Sunday was really refreshing to eat in the scorching heat. I don't know why, but it's surprisingly hard to find water in this park. They had vending machines, but they only accepted Japanese credit cards and not cash. Eventually, we managed to find some electrolyte drinks. Slightly overpriced though, but that's kind of expected in such places. I'd recommend everyone to swing by a convenience store beforehand and grab a bottle of water so you don't have to struggle like we did. This was the only roller coaster in the park and it actually has a loop, so I was pretty excited to go on. But turns out Jason's too tall so he didn't make the cut. So I'm going on this roller coaster ride by myself because Jason is too tall. He's 195 and over, so he can't go maximum height 195. The wait time for Indiana Jones Adventure was quite long, but surprisingly, the line felt like it was moving pretty fast. I genuinely appreciated the effort they put into the decor along the way so that you don't get too bored waiting in line. I didn't spot anyone drinking or refilling their water by the fountain, but I did notice many fountains scattered throughout the park. Jason described the ride as somewhat similar to the Mummy ride at Universal Studio but less intense. I had my sights set on the boat rides to explore the jungle, but unfortunately by the time I made it over, they had closed early, possibly due to the weather. Well, they weren't wrong because a few minutes later, it started to rain lightly and then it just escalated into a complete downpour.
We thought that it was a good idea to take this time to actually grab dinner. Would you believe it? This is the second time I've been on a ride at Disney that broke down. A ride at Epcot and now this. While we were waiting to be rescued, we talked about the Titan submarine by Ocean Gate that imploded which probably wasn't the best topic to talk about when Jason was about to have a panic attack. Finally, we managed to get out and it seems like they shut down the ride for everyone else after us. I'm not sure if we should consider ourselves lucky because although we were the last ones to board a submarine, we did end up getting stuck there for a while. It was a bit traumatizing to be stranded for so long, but at least we got to partially experience the ride before they closed it down. The rain had eased up, it wasn't pouring like before. I was hoping to catch the evening fireworks, but with this weather, I doubt that they'll even have them tonight. We chose to head home early before the rain got worse, and also we were pretty much soaked. Honestly, dealing with the heat and waiting in line really drained us. Both of us were pretty much exhausted and Jason wasn't feeling too great after almost experiencing a panic attack. I think it was a good call to leave because right after we got off the subway, it started to rain even harder. Despite today taking an unexpected turn, I'm really excited about the days ahead in Japan. Oh, and by the way, the weather stayed hot and humid for the rest of my trip, but luckily there wasn't a drop of rain. Don't forget to stay tuned and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming video about Odaiba.